فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير God once again, subhanallah. Be careful, my brothers, the way you use your mouths with your wives. Be careful. I see they're just looking at me, which means they use their mouths as well. So my sisters, you too, subhanallah. Be careful the way you use your mouths with your spouses. Yesterday we spoke about the hijab of a woman and I get an email from someone saying, please remind the men that they too need to wear hijab. So my brothers, there are black cloaks out there, all of you, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. No, the reality is there is hijab for men. What is the hijab? It is to lower your gaze, to dress with clothing that is not tight. Wallahi, it's your duty. You cannot show all your, you know, limbs and organs thinking, hey, I'm a man. No, 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 it's for you as well. Make sure you are dressed with loose clothing and make sure that the material is good and so on. It's for you as well, my brothers. It's not just for the women. In fact, when Allah speaks of lowering the gaze and hijab, He speaks about the men first in Surah Nur. Tell the believing males first to lower their gazes and to protect their private parts. And one whole verse later, he says, And also tell the believing women. Subhanallah. Amazing. But the men always think hijab for the women. Hijab for brother. Hijab is for you as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. You need to lower your gaze. You won't even know who's got the hijab and who hasn't because you're always looking down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us control our eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us really. May Allah forgive us. May He strengthen us. This type of talk that we've had the last two days and anything similar to it motivates us. It wakes us up. It makes us want to do something. It makes us alert. It makes us aware of our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So keep on attending various talks and lectures and spending time and effort so that you can maintain that motivation on a high. Because if you think I'm going to wait for the straight path next year, between this straight path and that straight path, there are many other paths that are not really straight. May Allah forgive us. So this is why we say, make a change now. Go back to Allah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's goodness. The mercy that's descending now will not be descending once we walk out of this hall. Do you know that? That's why when you walk out to the corridor, the feeling is never ever the same as it is while you are sitting here and now. Subhanallah. Allah says, when is it that the believers, has the time not come for your hearts to soften? Come on, you got to say, yes, Ya Allah, my heart, the time has come. My hearts are softened. And Alhamdulillah, I turn to you, Ya Allah. Allah says, وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِن قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدِ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Let them not be similar to those who have been given the book before them. Who prolonged in their bad ways so much that their hearts were hardened. You know, if you prolong in your bad ways for a long, long time, your heart becomes so hard that for you, the sin is nothing. I give you an example. A man who commits adultery or a woman who commits adultery or fornication for the first time would regret it because of their Iman. And then sometimes they commit it again. The regret is there perhaps. And a third time, the regret begins to dwindle slightly. And a fourth time, until it becomes 20, 30 times, and then it's just a game. It's no longer a regret. And Allah is totally out of the picture. Why? Because I'm used to it. My heart is hardened. This is called a hardened heart. You're so used to committing sin that for you to, to, to commit the sin is nothing. When you have been reading your five salah a day, to miss one salah, Yes, your heart will be sore and you will read your qada. Then suddenly you miss another one and then you miss a third one and then you miss all your fajr every day. So you say, I'm a very good Muslim. I read salah four times a day. Hey, is this a new sect or something? You need to make an effort to get up. 
Wallahi, forsake your bed for the sake of Allah. I promise you on the day of, on the day you die, your salah will come in the form of a man carrying you and helping you into your grave and go with you in your grave. And that salah will protect you from the punishment of the grave and the scorpions and the snakes that might attack on that day when you're all alone and your family's left you in the darkness. And they've gone back and they've forgotten about you. And a few generations down, they won't even know your name. But who's with you? My Salah. I used to get up for Salatul Fajr every single day. May Allah strengthen up for Salatul Fajr. How many of us are resolute that from this morning, we will be making Salatul Fajr? Put up your hand. Subhanallah, we see the hands by the will of Allah. The reason I'm telling you to put up your hand, it's not just because I want to see it. It's because you must feel you've made a commitment. That's all. I don't even know the people around me. I can't even see the hands. Oh, brother, by the way, I know you, yeah. <laughs> MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. It's a commitment. You've just made a commitment. You've said, Oh Allah, I will not miss. Oh Allah, I will dress appropriately. I will watch my tongue, brothers and sisters. Because today the media is such. Every small thing is a big swear word. Do you know that? They start swearing and it's on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Don't let your heart become hard. Go and read verse number 16 of Surah Al Hadid, and you will find it quite clearly telling you don't let the period prolong, lest your heart becomes hard like those before you. Don't let it become hard. You've done something wrong, turn to Allah immediately. Promise Allah never again. I won't do this again. Never. It's not worth it. Wallahi, we are insan. We are human. We do falter. We do fall. But at the same time, turn back to Allah. He is merciful. He will forgive you. But don't plan to commit a sin again. It's like always we say, the four conditions of asking Allah's forgiveness, to admit your sin, to regret it, to promise, Allah, to promise you're not going to do it again. In fact, to admit, to regret, to ask for forgiveness, and to promise never to do it again. Four things. Did you hear those four? Can I say them again? Admit your sin, regret it, ask Allah to forgive you for the sin, and at the same time, promise not to do it again. If those conditions are met, any sin between you and Allah is wiped out. Wiped out without ever being mentioned again. When you repent again from the same sin, that second repentance is now repenting for a sin that's no longer existing. So what it does is it elevates your status in the eyes of Allah. To say this person is still concerned about something I've already forgiven them a long time ago that shows that they love me. It shows that they worship me and me alone. So that is an elevation of your status, subhanallah. But if a person commits the same sin again and again, like I've always said, you need to ask Allah's forgiveness again and again. And on condition that when you are asking Allah's forgiveness, you haven't planned to sin, to repeat the sin. When I'm asking Allah's forgiveness, I must say never again. I can't say, Oh Allah, I committed this sin. I admit it. Ya Allah, I regret it. I ask you to forgive me. I won't commit it. I won't ever do it again. And then you stop for a moment and say, I might just do it again. Astaghfirullah. That's not what we want. You will not do it again. Then sometime later, if shaitan gets hold of you and the same sin is repeated, go back and repeat the same four stages. Go back. You never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And this is why we say, when you're in good company, when you have... When you have some positive speech coming in your direction, which motivates you and reminds you by the will of Allah, you will be able to become a much better person. This is why Allah says in Surah Ala Imran, verse number 133. <laughs> Make haste, rush towards the forgiveness of Allah. Don't delay. That's what it means. If you delay, you have no guarantee that you will die in the condition of Islam. No guarantee. This is why in another verse Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O oh, you who believe, be conscious of Allah as He is supposed to be conscious, as you are supposed to be conscious of Him, and do not die except in the condition of submission. Which means lead your entire life in a way that if you were to die right here, right now, you would not be embarrassed. It would be something good. If any one of us were to die here, right here, right now, subhanallah, and our hearts are softened, and we've just shed tears for the sake of Allah. Oh Allah, my ways and my bad habits, and all the struggling and the suffering I've gone through. Ya Allah, I will bear sabr for your sake. Grant me Jannah. And then suddenly you just die. What will happen? You think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to doom you to say, Nah, nah, you know what, not you. 
because it wasn't supposed to be there. No, astaghfirullah, no way. It's the mercy of Allah. He knows and he knows when you're going to go. Part of his mercy is that he did not tell us when we are going to die. He kept that knowledge with him. Imagine if we knew our date of death, we would commit sin. Say, for example, a person who's going to live for exactly 70, 69 years and 350 days, 55 days, commit sin complete. And when four days are left, Allahu Akbar, Allah forgive me, we would be hypocrites. But part of the mercy of Allah to keep us on track is that he did not tell us when you're going to go. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتٌ No one knows even on what earth or what land they will die. They have no guarantee of it. It's up to Allah. So, if you take a look at the verse I just read before you about of Surah Al Imran, where Allah says, make haste towards the forgiveness of Allah. And that would be making haste towards paradise. وَجَنَّةٍ It is maghfira and Jannah come together. Look at what Allah says. Sari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum wa jannah. Make haste to towards the forgiveness of your Rabb and the paradise. The two of them come hand in hand. Subhanallah. One does not come with the other. If you are not forgiven, how are you going to go to paradise?